Hello everyone around the world. Good morning or good afternoon. Greetings from Kampala, Uganda. My name is Yurai Uihazi and I'm going to talk to you today about the Biodiversity Investment Fund being implemented here in Uganda by the East African Development Bank. Uh, myself, I work uh, for a company called Agriculture and Finance Consultants and together with about seven or eight other colleagues, we, pr we provide technical assistance on this project for the EADB. But as you can see, AFC has a significant presence all around the world consulting on different projects. So what, what does Biodiversity Investment Fund do? In short, uh, the fund provides loan financing for businesses that of course must be commercially viable but they also must demonstrate what we call a positive and measurable impact towards biodiversity conservation in Uganda. It's, it's a new fund only about two and a half years ago, in fairly small, roughly $6 million capitalization from KFW Development Bank. And, and the loans are made in Ugandan shillings equivalent, so there is no foreign exchange exposure to the borrowers. The ticket size is say between 250,000 euro equivalent and up to one and a half million dollar is possible. Yes, why do we invest you know, in biodiversity or in sectors that relate to biodiversity in Uganda? As you can see, there is a significant funding gap of about 455 million dollars per year in Uganda for biodiversity conservation. That mostly includes public money, you know, the government and others. Primarily the gap is in, in the agricultural sector, as you can see, but there is underinvestment across the board, in, included in tourism. And commercial finance for biodiversity is minimal. So this fund is trying to, to find an example how, can, how we can make commercial funding actually useful for biodiversity conservation. So the sectors that we target, first of all, you know, it's tourism, a number one foreign exchange earner in Uganda, which has been growing very fast over the past 10 years. Uh, and of course, uh, given the global situation, now that, that the travel came to halt, the tourism sector will have to reinvent itself going forward which has implications also for, for the fund, of course. Uh, I would say uh, organic agriculture has been one of the, the most prominent sectors of our focus. And again, Uganda is number one in Africa in number of organic certified producers and also in the value of exports. So there are com companies that do various value addition uh, in different crops and the focus is not on staples but mostly on value-added crops such as you know it could be coffee, it could be shea nuts, it could be different horticulture, vegetables, fruits, uh, all of the, there are a lot of companies here active in this field. Second there is aquaculture, again Uganda has a uh, good opportunity to grow its sectors due to, it, due to its uh, large water bodies and there has been some significant growth in, in cage farming especially. And then we have other sectors such as forestry where we, we don't look at just timber or plantations but any products that can come from the forest such as honey, it could be you know again shea nuts or other products from the forest. Uh, these are some of the examples here, specific products uh, that we focus on. And uh, I'd like to also point out that climate change is a very, very important aspect, how we look at the, these companies, we, we, we say we, we try to climate proof their business. And why is that? When you look at biodiversity and climate change, these are basically two sides of the same coins. First, of course, biodiversity or natural resources, they store huge amounts of carbon uh, themselves. But second, you know, when you have a cli climate change, it impacts the biodiversity. And third, also, all these natural resources like forests, wetlands, you know, they also help to mitigate uh, the effects of the climate change. And they reflect that in our methodology. 
So what we say that actually our investment approach, we call it a biodiversity-based climate change adaptation approach, approach which leads into climate resilience of the companies and also of the financial institutions. Uh, our methodology is, is rigorous but pretty simple and we first look at the IFC performance standards, uh, performance standards specifically number six, uh, and we made it, uh, we pretty much simplified it into the three pillars. Um, so it's applicable, you know, for big companies, for small companies, SMEs. So pillar number one, we call it green operations or green business. We look at here at issues such as waste management, water, energy. Uh, how does the company manage, you know, its waste, water, do they recycle, uh, do they use renewable energy, say invested in solar power, or they just still rely on diesel generators as a backup. Second, we look for businesses that are inclusive, uh, specifically in the rural areas, because focus is, you know, on areas of high biodiversity. We are looking into companies to create local supply chains, maybe in tourism specifically, to source as much as possible from local communities. And also these, these supply chains must be equitable. So we are looking for companies that hire women, youth, and create good jobs, not just any jobs. And the third pillar, more direct, most direct, most directly related to conservation of habitats, is we look for ways how actually businesses through their actions can improve certain high biodiversity habitats and this could be done for if you have say an outgrower uh, agricultural company with a lot of outgrowers through some land use planning through protection of of forest buffer zones uh, wildlife corridors and so forth um, Impact versus risk is an important aspect that any financial institution should link to, should look into. Uh, currently, most of the banks or uh, investors, they already have their existing ESG frameworks, but focus primarily on the risk mitigation and compliance, which is, which is great and they must do it. Uh, what we do in addition to mitigating the environmental and social risks, we also look how to create this positive impact. So it's not, it's not enough to just mitigate your risk as an investor or financier. You also need to be able to show how through your portfolio you create a good social and environmental impact. And one methodology which could be used is what you call a mitigation hierarchy. I don't have much time to go here through it, but in short, this methodology shows, you know, first, of course, you're trying to avoid as much impact as, as you can or minimize. And, and whatever you can't avoid or minimize, then you can create a positive impact through restoration or through offsetting. Uh, this concept has been widely actually applied in, in the extractive industries. So in... Uh, how to apply this, say, in our in our work, uh, you can see in this diagram here, say, in the agriculture, if the, if the farmer has, certain, has a forest on its land and wants to expand its production, yes, you can cut the forest and expand the production. Another way would be to keep the forest standing, but, I, but make other changes to production techniques, you know, how to farming techniques, to improve the yield, say through conservation agriculture, but then, then you can also leave the forest standing. Uh, one, one way also what we do is we, we develop what we call biodiversity impact models for each sector and we customize it for each borrower. So, uh, so we actually build capacity for these businesses because number one thing what people say is yes, I'd like to actually uh, do good things and, and through my business contribute to conservation of nature, but I don't know how. So we try to show people or, or business people how to do it through our technical assistance. Yeah, there is a bit of uh, other 
screening criteria or methodology that we apply in our in our screening uh, I'm going to mention briefly maybe maybe the the geographical categorization you can see here on this map these areas in purple are what we call a high biodiversity areas in Uganda so roughly speaking we look when we look at the map we identify those districts as in yellow as our priority areas uh, but but we look number one we look at businesses that operate in high biodiversity areas where we can find some buffer zones corridors so through their expansion actually we create these positive biodiversity benefits um, yeah there is one example here in the western Uganda on this map so let's say these red areas here you see our potential corridors between the forest reserves in green so if you if you finance an agriculture you would like to try you know plan the expansion so these corridors stay in place and uh, yeah so hope that's clear maybe one other example on that in tourism say in our fund we would not finance typical hotel say in town but some nature-based lodge near some uh, attractive sites that may be that may be attractive what what are some other potential interventions or modalities that could help make this fund more successful uh, I need to mention say a potential guarantee facility uh, there is a lot of interest in these funds we've, we've, we've received a lot of application and there's a lot of good businesses some of them of course may not may not uh, meet the requirements to, to get the loan so it's some sort of a third party uh, guarantee facility for the entire fund would be helpful even though we already work with a couple of other uh, external institutions to provide partial guarantees for loans to the borrowers uh, second uh, sometimes businesses uh, could work with other partners to achieve uh, on their you know biodiversity and, and social impact it's simply you know better to outsource some functions because because these partners they have the know-how expertise so if you say I uh, want to plant trees uh, there are people there who've been doing it for a number of years so you can simply talk to them and achieve what you need what you need to do um, next business skills improvement it, that's a very imp important area that our technical technical team does we have experts you know in business planning and in aquaculture organic agriculture tourism and all the sectors so every time we have a solid application we assign these people to work with the business to actually help them on various issues first on capital structure here we find sometimes yes businesses need financing they don't know what kind of financing they need sometimes they rely they want to borrow too much or maybe they are not ready for for the loan right away so we try to advise them maybe direct them first to some other investors they come back a few years later to get a loan if, if they don't qualify right now uh, they also find that there is a lot of interest in for investing in say infrastructure capital expenditures equipment buildings people tend to overlook soft costs such as marketing training staff you know qualified good middle management these issues we try to identify and 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 advise businesses on on, on how to move forward uh, yes so in conclusion uh, what what do financial institutions can do through the biodiversity impact investment they mainly help themselves because through this kind of approach your portfolio of businesses that you finance can become climate what we call climate proof and generating those social environmental benefits now if you are climate proof you have less risk which means that it's likely that your the long-term performance of your investments or, or of your loans you know it's not just less risky but it's also better you, you experience less default 
and and the performance of the companies will be better thank you you feel free to reach out to me my email is on page one